Today is October 8th, and that means it's Walrus Day. Happy Walrus Day, everybody. What's Walrus Day? Well, I'm glad you asked. My friend Job, shown here curing cancer, created Walrus Day when he was a kid by combining his favorite month, his favorite number, and his favorite animal into one holiday. He claimed it's very popular in Nevada City in The Hague. Well, what does one do on Walrus Day? Well, according to a press release from Job, This day is your excuse to treat yourself and family to whatever little luxuries you normally wouldn't. You can call in sick to work, order your favorite food, buy yourself a cake, that album, DVD you want, whatever. It's all day, so get creative and use the Walrus Day excuse as much as you want. Get creative? Okay! A few weeks ago, I created an art piece for the Just Britney show over at the World of Wonder Gallery in Hollywood. It's a show of nothing but Britney Spears art. Art inspired by Britney Spears, that is. My piece was called Britney's Self-Service Salon, and as you can see, it went over pretty well. Which is good, because had you seen me two days before the opening, I would have been covered in resin and neuroses and self-doubt, asking you or anyone else who came near me why the hell I got involved in doing this in the first place. <laughs> well, that's the thing about being an artist. Well, doctors can cure people, businessmen can make money, and even the guy in the cubicle can save up for IKEA, Artists don't have a real reason for existing. And the truth is, nowadays, if you look under the hood of the engine of creation, it's kind of a scary place. On the set of the terrible 1982 comedy club Paradise, Robin Williams went up to his co-star, Peter O'Toole, and asked him what it was that had driven him for all these years. Peter O'Toole went up to Williams and whispered into his ear very, very quietly, me, 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 me. But what was once a whispered secret is now a national pastime, and we've become a nation obsessed not just with the famous, but with becoming famous ourselves. Which brings us to a new book by Elizabeth Curid called The Warhol Economy. It's subtitled How Fashion, Art, and Music Drive New York City. And it's a really interesting read. Its main thesis is simply that art, uh, which she sort of loosely defines as being stuff which has no intrinsic value, but which we pay a lot of money for, is the nexus of a whole series of industries, including nightlife, publishing, even urban development. She takes special pains to point out the importance artists have in being the first ones to create tangible objects of a subculture uh, that can be then used by advertisers either to appeal to that subculture or to emulate it. She throws extra praise on artists like Ryan McGinley, who managed to both be the spirit of subcultures as well as serving as the primary gatekeepers of that subculture's brand identity and image. But is this why we create art? Did our Neolithic ancestors spray charcoal on the walls to extend Brand Caveman? Was the opening a must-see event that could only be attended by the most elite? And where was the artist at this event? Was he sitting around in wig and sunglasses, commenting on how glamorous the igneous rocks looked by torchlight? We really do live in Warhol's world. Thanks to technology, the tools of creation are in the hands of more people now than have ever been before. Every day on YouTube, thousands of filmmakers are able to follow Jean Genet's advice that the best way to criticize one film is to make another. We've even had to redefine what creation is. A lot of music is created from original tracks that have been resampled, filtered through Andy's soup can so all we hear is the echoes, having long ago forgotten the original source. But is this creative revolution going to be fueled solely by the desire to become rich and famous? Or is it going to be more like Job's Walrus Day? That is, are we creating a giant version of the high school fame factory? Or are we creating a global sandbox where everyone can come in, join, and play? Because let's face it, art is a pretty silly thing. No matter how much Hollywood or Madison Avenue or Chelsea tries to turn it into an industry, at the end of the day, none of us know why we like it. We just do. It's because art doesn't need to exist that it's so important that it does. As uh, Kermit the Frog says, what's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? Only nowadays, the stars aren't up high, they're just high on drugs and flashing their JJ to the paparazzi. While art can create cash, it must and needs to create a sense of wonder. We don't need a Warhol economy. We need a rainbow connection.